What is up everyone? How are you doing today? My name is Mize and today we'll be talking about the third episode for Fire Force. And in this episode, we finally get introduced to the pink hair girl who is apparently I think they call her the fifth Adola Burst. So at least from my own assumption previous episode of wondering if step person who made the Adola Link with Shinra was an Adola Link user was problem was most likely the case. So now in terms of Adola Burst user we have the mysterious girl that made the Adola Link, we have Harime, which was who was with the Evangelist, Sho, who was with the Evangelist, and then Shinra, who was with the Fire Force. So right now, in terms of collecting all the Adolaverse users, the Evangelists are actually winning, which is kind of a scary thought to think about since they're the ones that are trying to start the Great Cataclysm all over again. But I digress. But we start this episode kind of going through all the aftermath of what happened over in the fourth company after Shinra broke the Adora link and the girl telling her that well, telling him that there is going to be another Adola burst user being born into the world and we see and originally I thought the Evangelists already knew but it seems like they were watching over obviously it was assumed that in the previous episode that that girl potentially made Adola links with other people which if that was her power that would be an enormous power to have to bring people into that Adola link but no the people who were being controlled who attacked Shinra before he was being controlled by the Adola link was Harume the same girl that was able to manipulate Sho into running away with them at the end of season one um, but it does seem like the evangelist didn't know about the Adola link user until that moment as well so they were all kind of scrambling to wonder when the next Adola Link user, where where are they going to be, where are they going to be born, is it going to be born from a new person, is it going to be born from like, you know, them just finding the powers, and then we do find out later throughout the show. After that, Obi, I finally remember his name, but Obi, a uh, captain for Company 8, is talking with the Fire Defense Force, um, who hired him, who, who, who let him um, make Company 8, in order to investigate all the stuff that's been going on with the potential um, uh, random infernos that have been popping up with the city, and obviously there's a lot more that's going on. And this was actually interesting because Obi is actually pitching to them, let us make a joint operation. Let us go and have actually have like a like a plan to actually attack these evangelists head on, and let's do this. Um, the person who I assume is the chairman or the, one of the top leaders for the Fire Defense Force says that that's not really possible. Company 8 is under that power and, and we give you free will to do whatever you please as long as you're trying to figure out um, what is going on in the city and to stop whatever is being planned in order to destroy the city or the world by, you know, with the great cataclysm that could potentially be a thing. But he's telling him that as of right now, we can't necessarily get all the other companies together in order to do this, which which shows me that maybe we might not get many companies, or it might be hard enough that we might only get like a few companies, as I thought. Like I wouldn't think like all the companies are coming together, but I would assume at least from intro, at least from the introduction um, and the intro, we we're, we're at the very very least going to get um company four i know that um i would like to see company one and company five and company seven at least join them in that battle to be fair i'd like to see all the companies come in and join and have like just this big whole thing and finally get a chance to see all the other companies companies do what they're doing and stuff like that but if if, if that's not possible within the the war the world and lore of fire force company one Company, company one, company five, company seven, company eight. That would be and company four. Now with everything going on and with um, Agu being one of the only people as well to actually have that Adola link as well. So that's what I would assume for the most part. And after that, we finally get introduced to the pink-haired protagonist girl, which I do not remember her name. So I'm gonna actually check that real quick. All right, so I found out her name. Her name is Inka, I was about to say. She has two companions with her. I don't really care about the companions. They become very insignificant later. But she is a schoolgirl who is on the side, a kind of rebel who has the ability to sniff out fires or to predict fires. 
Actually, no. Sniff out fires. Predicting fires would be different from the way she does it. She legitimately knows when fires are going to start. She sees like like a trail of flames that are about to, to happen and she is able to at least maneuver or move away from them as soon as it's about to happen. This this is an enormous ability. Again, this is what this is one of the things that I've stated about Fire Force is that when when using one element you you got to oh shit. My apologies. When using one element, you gotta get you gotta get creative with the elements that you're using. You gotta be able to make every power interesting, every power feel unique, every power feel somewhat special. And and hers is legitimately special because not only can well going on there, she does get she does awaken more of her power, but she does have the power to legitimately see trails. Now whether that's due to that whether that's her normal fire ability or if that's awakened through some other purpose we don't know we do know her adola power though or the power that is waking through adola and that is the ability to create fire like okay the, like her adola ability or her awakened ability is is really weird so similar to how she can see like trails and protect when fires are going to start a similar thing happens but there's a start goal and then there's a start space and there's a goal space and what she does is that she traces the entire thing and once she gets to the goal um it creates like a trail of flames that end up doing at the end of it an explosion this is um i don't know how exactly i I feel about this power like in, in in hindsight it's cool and it messes with her ability but I, I don't know I think I would have to wait to see how practical that actually can be I mean I could I could definitely see some practicality with it with her being more of the sneaky character she could probably use it in terms of like hiding in the bushes and being able to like trail a whole thing to like enemies from away and like like do it and do some just like cool shit and like have them unexpectedly know when it's going to happen that is legitimately cool and then on top of that she also has the power to see when fires are going to happen so her like trailing and starting fires but they don't know it versus her and it, it, it's all it's all crazy but we see what she does with the at least the power that she was at least awakened when she was a lot younger and she uses that in order to save people but also get some cash in return where she knows where the fire is going to start and she'll go in and she'll go into the person's house and she'll be like oh man this fire man it sucks really would be a shame if you went ahead and um burned to death but i could save you but you just you just need to give me some money or something valuable of yours and obviously with most of the people she with most of the people she will they will mostly give her something because you know people don't want to die um, it does bother me because when they're going to the reported fire or they're going to deal with the fires, um, they do mention the fact that apparently she's been doing this for a, a long time. So I feel like we should have at least seen her in some capacity in season one. However, I can completely understand. I do mention that she's elusive, so I'm not, I'm not going to be too harsh over the fact that that we were not introduced to her at a certain point. I'm just going to state that, that at least in my opinion, it was a little weird that we didn't. But and, but like but like I said, that is not that is not my I, I don't really care I don't really care about it that much. But um, we see her do that, and you know she's explaining her best story of how like she got caught in a fire and that oh awoken and her two companions or her oh, accomplices is probably better rather than calling them a can, uh, companions, but. Um, her, her accomplices, her accomplices, um, are kind of saying like, yeah, let's go home. And then she has a moment where she just sees, she just sees like, like fires breaking out, like within the city and low key. I thought, I thought the cataclysm was about to start because that seemed like there was about to be like a whole bunch of just like fires about to start that was soon going to engulf the flames. That's not the case. 
Um, we still don't necessarily know what's causing all the fires. I would have to assume it is the evangelist or some type of thing. But, you know, knowing her, she's just like, oh, this is the perfect time to make money. We can save people. We can go get money. This is going to be great. And everyone, both of her accomplices is just like, yo, you, you can see them, but we can't. We're going to die. We don't know if, like, we can get hurt. This is a horrible thing. And she's like, okay, fair enough. But, you know, most of the money's going to be to me, so you can fuck yourself. And then, as um, she's about to leave, we get introduced to... Uh, one of the characters, okay, well, not introduced, but I would say we finally get to see you in action. It's the um, big black dude that was with Harume. Forgot his name. I'll figure that out next episode because the next episode will definitely be his episode. I will guarantee you that from the end of the show. And we finally get to see him in action where he's like, he comes down and he's like trying to take Inka, obviously, because her Dola, her Dola burst just fucking awoken and he's just like all right you need to come with me you 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 will be helping us with the stuff and he he's just being he's just being mad aggressive dog he's just being like you need to come with me you need to go ahead you need to you need to help us create the the great flames of the cataclysm and we need your help but we, you just need to come with us you just need to, you just need to, you just need to come with us and you just need to help us and this dude being mad aggressive and he's also being a little confusing i assume because harame is also communicating with him in some way um i mean we do see him she's able to use her electricity in order to communicate with others um in what capacity i'm not 100 sure but she's able to do it but one of the one of her accomplices is like trying to like calm him down, like, hey buddy, like you need to chill. And you just see this man grab his hand and just like go back. And this man's I sh I shit you not. This man's whole right arm gone. Gone. Just gone. Just gone. And he falls and he's just in a sea of his blood. He's dead. He's dead. He's just legitimately like officially just dead. <laughs> and she freaks out of it. I I okay. So this is the thing about Inka, right? Like, she seems scared, but previously she was mentioning how being caught in the fires, it, like, gave her excitement. It gave her thrills. It gave her the will to live. Or, like, the fear of death gave her the will to live. It gave her the excitement and the reason she needed in order to keep going and keep living. So... I don't know whether she's going to go more towards the crazy girl side of, like, she might join um, the evangelist and just be uh, as crazy of a girl as Hagrime, or if she ends up aligning herself with the Fire Force, but she's just kind of that weird, kooky type of character. Or at the very least, due to the fact that she is a high schooler, and I'm assuming everyone else on the Fire Force is at least adults, that... While she might not be able to become a Fire Force member, she will most likely, at the very least, be in some way a part um, of the story, but probably just over the watchful eye, or she'll have to live close to the Fire Force, or she'll at least, or she'll at the very least hang around them. I could see her becoming part of the Force, and her just being like, oh yeah, like, I live for the danger, and like, getting herself into like, really dangerous situations and stuff like that but like I, that would be a good that would be a good out to see but basically the big dude is chasing Inka around and obviously along comes Sho coming in flying trying to save him and this this is the part where I, I sat back and I, I was I was so ready because Sho flies in right Sho you know he's, he's, he's called Rapid Kick or he's called the Rapid, he's called Devil Feet. The man's got strong feet. The man's got quick feet. And those quickness, along with his power, it hurt. It should be able to knock off a, a lot of people. Including, like, I, I would say it's on the level of he could give ben, Benny Aru a fight. Actually, he gave the first captain of, of the captain of, of Company 1 a decent fight. And was able to land a hit on him. So that should say a lot about how strong Shinra is, if not already. And so... You see this right this man does not flinch this man does not flinch you see this man like he flies in and he hits him in the face and the knee in the face he doesn't feel nothing in fact before this ink is so starting to use like her power and he's just like not phased by it he's just like Toof. oh so that's your power oh that's cool 
Oh, she's trying to use it. I don't think you're trying to hurt me. I think you're trying to figure it out. Oh, well, well come with me and I'll, I'll teach you how to use your ability. But, like, this man got hit by a Sheener kick. A Sheener knee. And his man didn't get, didn't get phased. And so, like, Sheener comes and it's just like, oh, yeah, you're going to save me. Ika's confused. But also being her, like, sort of crazy girl of just like, oh, what can you do for me? You know? Like, why would I go with you? Why would I go with the Fire Force? Why would I be in the custody? Fuck that shit. That shit's stupid, you know? Being the rebellious girl she is. And then this man's crew comes, and he, they start chanting. It's just like, charge one, charge two, charge three. And, like, Inga and Shira and probably everyone else is watching is super confused. And you just see this man go off. This man's fire ability is so strong. I still don't know what it is because it just looks like, like... Right. Okay, think of the, the best way I can explain this ability is that it seems like Bakugo's ability, but instead of having like sweat that ignites and that he can activate on his own, it seems like he's charged through like. The, okay, but think of Bakugo, but instead of the power of ignition through sweat, he's. That he's that vil he's part of the uh he's he's similar okay I'm 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 really bad at explaining this but basically think of Bakugo and that dude from Bleach not like the main series which well soon is gonna happen but the Thousand Year Blood Work arc think of like the wrestling the wrestling character who had the little companion that every time he cheered him on he got powerful and then Bakugo's ability of explosions combine those two together and that's what I think his ability is it hasn't been completely explained but that's what it's the that's what it, it legitimately seems like that his power is filled through like the chanting of like his subordinates and the more they chant and the more they like give him passion the more that he was he responds to just like the fires being like more powerful and more explosive like this man is approaching shinra and just destroying the ground in front of him like he he just says walk and like every step is just like an explosion and like not like a small explosion like a like a huge explosion man and uh, like like I'm talking about this man tried to give him a kick to the face. Shinra's, not only Shinra's fire, fire, but Shinra's physical kick didn't do shit. He just grabbed Shinra, he slams him in the fucking ground like he's a goddamn, or in, in the man's words, that he's just a nimble little rat. And then the episode ended. They face off after the walk of, the, of explosions, and it ended, and I was so upset. But so much is going to happen within the fourth episode, and like I said, I love this show. Season two is going hard, and I am ready for it. I am ready for it, and I am. I want this fight. I need to see that man. I want to cosplay that man. That cosplay is not hard. You literally need a white robe, and I just need to paint like the evangelist sign on something on a band. I need to cosplay this man, and I need to dye my hair white. I need this man. I need this man. This man. I like this man. <laughs> I really, really like this man. This man is a legitimate boss. He's a legitimate boss. He's a fucking boss. I fucking, I fucking love, I fucking love him. He's a fucking boss. God, this man. Okay, I'm rambling on. Like I could go all day about this man. I'm just happy to have a de another really cool, decent black character in in an anime. Cause that man is raw. That man is like, that man is like. Escanor levels of like raw. That man's Escanor levels of raw. It's Escanor levels of like passionate Escanor levels of raw. I love that man. And I hope I actually hope he kicks the shit out of Shina, because if he does that would be legitimately cool. But like I said, I'm rambling on. Let me know what you guys thought of episode three in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it could be better? Did you think it was worse? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and, a sus and subscribe to the channel for more content. My name is Wimize, and I hope you all have a very lovely day. I love your faces. Why do I keep stealing other YouTubers' outros? Either way, I hope you guys have a good day, morning, evening, whatever. Bye.